Hey guys, welcome back to Creep Designs by Twitch. Starting the week with a new piece, as well as a new tattoo. Check it out. I will put up a photo so you can see it better. Don't judge me. This is the final piece in the set of three Chinese pieces for my client. I left this one for last because it has a lot of damage and it is absolutely filthy as you can see here. I have been told by the client that these pieces did end up in flood water briefly. So I'm not so much trying to restore them professionally because I've been told that what I'm doing is not restoration. Um, but I am trying to revive them as best as I can so that they can continue to be used and not just end up in the dump. I left this piece for last out of the set because not only does it have a lot of components to it as you can see, but there is also a hell of a lot of damage to it. And the task in itself, just the repairs on this piece seemed so daunting that I just put it off. But first things first, cleaning all of this mud off. It looks like a vampire cabinet got dusted. So this is some of the damage that I was talking about before. This is the runner for the two little sliding doors that are here and as you can see it is pretty bad. Now I'm not going to show all of the scraping and sanding process on this because there is a lot as you've seen and we would be here for hours and I don't think anyone wants that. But I did want to show you this part because as you can see I'm trying to decide what way to go with this. I started off with scraping it and then decided that the best plan of attack would be to try and pull it apart and I was able to do that. Okay, so far the only part that I've managed to get sanded is this one single part here. I can't take that out because there's a nail in there and it's a big fat nail and I'm just going to leave it there. Um, so because there are so many parts to this, I'm choosing a different plan of attack this time. So for the other two pieces, I disassembled everything and then sanded and scraped everything all in one hit and then cleaned it all in one hit and then clear coated it all in one hit and then put it all together. This time what my plan of attack is is to work on this part, keep it all laid out so I know and remember exactly where it all goes back, take this part, sand it, put it back, take this part, sand it, put it back and then once that's all sanded I'll clean it seal it, put it back together, put it aside. And then I'll move on to like one of those little doors there and do the same thing with that until everything is sanded and done and then just needs to get put back together. The reason I'm doing it that way this time is because on the other pieces, all of the sanding and scraping for like two or three weeks in one long hit was too much it absolutely killed my hand and nearly drove me insane more so <laughs> um so i'm hoping this way it won't be such a daunting task and i won't want to quit my job we'll see as much as these parts look really daunting and trust me i was daunted by it uh, because they're all relatively flat surfaces with no curves and no spindles or anything like that it was actually really easy to do it was just very fiddly and time consuming as of course they're going to be to make this job a little easier on my hands i grabbed some scrap sandpaper and some paint stirrers and made little sanding sticks. Now I know you can buy these online, you can get them on Amazon, but I didn't want to have to wait for things to arrive in the mail and these were the perfect size for what I needed them for. The 
this is me trying to make an effort to work cleaner and tidier. It really doesn't last long. I'm of course using Carter Milli clear coat for this, same as I did on the other pieces. And this would definitely be easier with a spray gun, but because of the way I'm going about it this time, getting out the spray gun and setting it up to do these three small pieces really wouldn't be worth it. This first coat will of course raise the grain of the wood, so once it's completely dry I'll then go over it with a piece of 400 grit sandpaper just to smooth it down before I go in with another two coats. Once it's all really well dried, I'll go in with a piece of wet dry sandpaper and cartamelli hemp oil and give everything a really good wet sand. This will give you a baby bottom smooth finish. If it sounded like I was struggling to get those words out just then, it was because it took me 10 attempts to say it and not fumble my words. It's two pieces of plastic, so someone's plugged up this hole with two pieces of plastic. <coughs> I've got an abundance of sawdust everywhere, so I may as well make use of it and make some wood putty. It's going to dry a little bit darker than the drawer itself but this is going to be a closer match than anything else I've got in the shop at the moment and it's only for this one spot. As you can see I've got to get in all of these parts here and I decided to make some more sanding sticks but I've used these pieces of dowel this time because they'll be stronger and won't flex as much um, and as you can see I've beveled so that's the edge that has the sandpaper on it but I've also beveled the outer edges so that there's nothing stopping me from getting into corners and stuff so these have been left overnight so I can take the clamps off now and start sanding. This is one of the other repairs that has been absolutely daunting me. Um, but as soon as I stopped procrastinating and putting it off, I looked at it and went, all right, I know exactly what I need to do. All I need is some wood that'll match. So uh, I'll just uh, take that, thank you. I'm not entirely sure what this wood is. Um, it kind of looks a little like pine, but it's the wrong color. And it is a lot softer than pine, like really, really soft, which is why I'm not doing heaps of sanding, like power sanding and heaps of paint stripping because it's very porous and very soft. So in a situation like this where I need a new piece of wood to do a repair on a cabinet like this, I will find an inconspicuous spot on the piece of furniture and salvage a piece of wood where it's not going to be seen and that way the wood will hopefully match better than if I got something new. These parts are pretty vital to the doors because it's what holds them in place and allows them to swing back and forth. So I'm taking my time to do these properly and make sure that they are going to hold and stand the test of time. Now at this point I was listening to an audiobook 
on my speaker so unfortunately there are no shop sounds in this part of the video because of copyright um so instead you get to listen to me talk so i'm going to say a quick thank you to some people starting with super thanks thank you to money making mike g diys by da and cat from owling dog and for coffees in the buy me a coffee app thank you to an anonymous supporter denise ruth decker Rita, my friend Lavon from La Vintage Decor, Kate Kozik, and another anonymous person who called me a drongo. Love it. Absolutely love it. Thank you guys so much. After putting them in place to check to see if I needed to make any adjustments, I was happy with where they sat and I decided that they needed a bit more reinforcement. So I just drilled a couple of little holes, pumped some glue in there and stuck in some skewers and just, you know, tap, tap, tap. And chop, chop, chop. And sand, sand, sand. Not perfect, but pretty bloody good. So these are the parts that I was really dreading trying to repair. In a perfect world, I would have liked to remove these parts and machine new ones to replace them with, but I do not have the equipment to do that. So I had to make do with what was still existing and build on top of that and strengthen what was there. Now I didn't show the process of how I rebuilt these runners because it took me a day and a half just to get these done. But basically with this bottom one there wasn't much left at all so I chiseled off what remained, sanded it flat and used some scrap plywood to rebuild the back of it. This middle one wasn't quite as bad and just needed some bondo in a couple of places to kind of strengthen and rebuild parts. But this top one was a real pain in the ass. This one you took a lot of bondo and a lot of sanding and a lot of chiseling and more bondo and more sanding and it was a nightmare. This is the bottom runner with it up the right way so that you can see just how bad it was. This is how it looks with the plywood rebuild on the back. I have checked with the doors in it is completely unnoticeable from the front. Whilst we get back to sanding and I do a little montage of my sanding activity, I'm going to talk about a couple of things. Now I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I happen to be wearing my very own Creep Designs t-shirt. You too can look as cool as me. You can find some of the items below this video or you can follow the link to the full website and look at even more amazing items. There will be more designs to come as well. The second thing on the agenda is my membership program. Our little group is growing and I'm so glad to see you guys sharing your work in our Facebook group. I've decided to start doing a monthly member spotlight where I will give a shout out to a lucky member and show off a piece of furniture that they have finished. This month's bloody legend is Linda Drody Clay. I absolutely love everything she's done with this dresser but especially those stars, they are absolutely gorgeous. I am so glad to be done with the sanding, over it, completely over it, but how much better does that look already? So much better. If you follow me on my socials, you know exactly what's coming. You forgot about me. So basically, before and after. Okay, so all of the outside is sanded. Uh, the reason I haven't sanded inside is because the first piece that I did for this client, I painted the inside of it because it was really dark and it was really deeply embedded because the the wood on the inside hadn't been sanded smooth before it was stained, so it's like really, really absorbed that stain. Um, and rather than spending twice the amount of time that I've already spent on it, trying to clean up the inside and sand it, um, I talked to my client and she was happy for me to paint the inside black like I did on the first piece. Um, and the other thing I need to do before I can do that is deal with this part here. So... This part was cut out previously to allow for the back of an old TV that used to sit in here. Um, but I'm going to cut 
this these two sections out so these two boards here so those two are going to come out um, don't need to worry about this because this was for a shelf previously but I believe there's going to be another TV going in here because she also wants me to cut a hole for a power cord in the back so that's what we're doing now and you can see how rough the inside of it is and that will look a lot better once it is painted black so as you can kind of see here I've replaced the boards with some scrap from another project and removed the runner from that back section just so that it wouldn't look weird I didn't remove the supports from the sides because I didn't want to cause any damage to the side panelling now whilst I didn't want to get rid of every imperfection I did also as you can see hit it with some bondo on the inside to fill any big holes the paint I'm using to do the inside is Cartamilli Black Bear in the mineral paint range. Once all the paint was dry, I went around with some sandpaper on a sanding block and knocked down all of those edges. After giving everything a really good clean and checking for anything else that needed to be smooth sanded, it was finally time to spray. Starting with the top, which was a little awkward. The spray gun I'm using is the Wagner W350 wood and metal sprayer. I've unfortunately run out of my Cartsamilli clear coat, but it gave me the perfect opportunity to test out Unique Options clear coat, and I have to say it went through the sprayer so easily. I do feel like I go through a fair bit more top coat when I spray it, but in this business, time is money, so I feel like it is well worth it. I applied my first coat, then smooth sanded with 400 grit sandpaper, and then went in with another two coats. Once it was all dry, I gave it a rub down with some Cartamilli hemp oil. Then I went over it with a piece of 400 grit sandpaper. This is wet sanding and it will give you a baby bottom smooth finish. You do not need to be super rough with the sandpaper when you're doing this. Just I just run it over lightly and test the surface to see how smooth it is. I also grabbed the parts that I had previ previously sealed weeks ago and gave them a fresh coat of hemp oil. And this is me accidentally sticking my top coat to the workbench. We're getting down to the nitty gritty end of this project. So of course I'm doing all the things that I forgot to do previously, like cut this power plug hole. I also had to put together this little block to replace a part that was broken. So when the doors are both installed again, this block is just to stop the doors from swinging in. I couldn't be bothered dirtying a brush just for this, so I grabbed some Fiddly Bits black spray that I had on hand. Why am I spraying it black? You'll see shortly. So as you'll see here, I painted it black so that when you're looking at it like this, it won't stick out like dog's nuts. I swear I must be losing it. I'm up to the point where I'm polishing the hardware so that I can get those attached and then we're done. So I've got it all laid out here. I'm putting brass on it. I'm like, okay, those two are for the drawers, those two are for the doors, and the, this one here is for the locking pin to go through, but there needs to be a second one. I'm like, where is it? Where is it? I'm looking everywhere. I'm starting to clean up my mess and picking through things, checking my containers that they were in. I'm like, where is it? Go online and I'm looking online to see if I can order another one. I can't find them. 
I'm starting to panic. Like, oh my god, what am I gonna do? And here we all thought I was done with this. I opted for paint stripper this time rather than just sanding the entire piece. Um, and I rigged up this fancy little doodad to hold it. I let the paint stripper sit for a while and then I went in with a wire brush and scrubbed those bad boys and then smooth sanded them. And sealed them obviously. As always, there are going to be people that look at this and say, well, you didn't do much to it, but, you know, there was a lot of damage to this. And now look at it. I've already sent photos to my client because I just could not wait for her to see this piece finished. Her reaction was what makes all of the extra work worth it. She's absolutely thrilled with all of the pieces that I've done for them and even told me that her husband wanted to send these pieces to the dump after they went through flood water. I am so glad they didn't go to the dump because they look absolutely fantastic. As usual, I will put everything I've used in this video in the description. You will also find a link there for a video that explains my membership program, as well as my link for buy me a coffee and my Amazon wishlist. I don't expect any handouts or anything like that. I'm not asking for anything, but I do appreciate the support that I get. But the biggest way that anyone can support me, which is also free for you guys, is to subscribe. So please make sure you do. See you guys on the next one and thanks for watching.